Hey guys, it's me at Eurotrash Motorsports. I'd like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Now, it is November 2020 and snow has officially fallen in Canada. What that means is that all of the car projects pretty much have to stop anything that requires work outside you can just about forget it uh, nobody wants to be doing car projects at minus 30 outside lucky for me last year I was able to get a car lift inside the garage which means that I can now officially have winter projects today in episode one of this project I'm going to give you some background info on the car we're going to do a walk around so we can check out the uh, fantastic condition that this vehicle is actually in I'm going to uh, show you the engine. I'm going to talk about what happened to this engine, how did it end up in this vehicle. I'm gonna tell you about my plans for this particular car. And if we have the time, we're gonna try and crank the engine. And I'm also going to take the injectors out and put them on my injector test bench. If you'd like to see more about this project, please subscribe below and give us a thumbs up if you like the content that you're seeing. All right, now let's have a look at the car and talk about some of the history. To jump into the background of this vehicle, we have to go back about 25 years ago. When I was a little kid growing up in Eastern Europe, my dad was a huge fan of Mercedes diesel cars, didn't have one back there. Um, so I always kept promising when I was a little guy, I said, listen, I'm going to buy you a Mercedes when you're old. When I grow up, I'm going to buy you a Mercedes. Um, and I was really excited about it. What did I know, right? Uh, fast forward 25 years later, we're now in Canada. And uh, my dad and I have built ton of vehicles together we did the uh, b4 avant uh, race it together at targa we built the w8 uh, tdi manual swap which is a pretty unique vehicle but we never got our hands on a mercedes okay now at that time i think it was about uh five six seven years ago i really i, I kind of decided i was in a position to do it so i decided that for my dad's 60th birthday i'm going to buy him a diesel mercedes okay i set that up and i said that's it that's he's going to be his his 60th present it's a big deal he's going to love it he's going to be really excited about it two years before that so he was about 58 um I, I started looking for a vehicle like i was on the local website things kept popping up but really nothing all that exciting until he called me one day and said i found the perfect car oh okay here we go so obviously this was uh, ruining my plans to uh, to get him a diesel mercedes for his 60th so I said, okay, let's go take a look, um, knowing that I obviously didn't want him to buy um, a diesel Mercedes. We went and uh, he had found a W210 E300, uh, so about 99, 1999 W210, uh, which if you're familiar with Mercedes, is probably the best Mercedes diesel engine, the OM606. It's one of the worst Mercedes um, chassis, the W210. And in North America, these things just fall apart, okay? There's really not much you can do about it, especially in Canada, we get salt on the road. These things are just absolute garbage, okay? Um, we went to look at it, this car was in a rough condition, okay? There was rust everywhere. Uh, the rear was sitting very close to the ground. There's something going on with the springs. The engine was rough, the transmission was rough, the brakes were rough, everything. It was just a rough, rough car. And at the time, I remember saying to my dad, man, don't buy it, we're gonna find something better. Like, it's not worth it. He said, no, absolutely not. This is my dream vehicle. So he went ahead and bought it. It was a good price. It didn't really matter that much. Um, we brought it home, had a look at it. It was, it was garbage. This car was just, just done for, okay? The re both rear springs were broken, so the car was more or less sitting on the ground. The brake lines were completely rusted. Uh, the floor had a bunch of holes in it. it. It was just rough. Nice interior, for sure. The engine, we were able to get up and running pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, it wasn't really any big issues with it. But the car was just done for. And it all kind of came to a, a, a halt. The moment I started doing the brakes, um, I had to take one of the calipers off and I remember just the brake line disintegrating in my hands. And I started looking at replacing the whole thing from the front to the back and it, it would have been a tremendous job. I had to take half the car apart just to get the brake lines replaced. So I said, absolutely not. I don't have the time to deal with this. Just just leave it. So that car sat parked in a, in a ditch for, for a couple of years uh, until we pulled the engine out and it's now sitting in my dad's garage. All right, we're back on track. I, I am back to looking for a car for his six year birthday. Everything is great until he calls me two days later and basically said, that's it, I found it. I found my dream car, uh, we have it. I'm gonna go get it. Uh, this time around, he found himself a W124. So an 18, 1986 uh, 300, Mercedes 300 uh, with the OM603 turbo diesel engine in it. 
very clean car absolutely a little bit old a little bit dated uh, the interior was a little rough the seats were kind of i think they're notorious for that the seats were kind of um, broken a little bit but he went and bought it didn't have a spec of rust on this vehicle it ran quite well the transmission had some issues with it i think they all do at that age uh, you have to kind of replace some valves and, and stuff like that to, uh, to get it back up on the road but anyways my dad bought the car it he had it for uh, the best part of about three to four years um, and at the time um, my mom drove it a couple of summers in a row um, mostly said parked over the winter it's not a really a winter vehicle being a diesel real world drive um, and the, the the thing is my dad never actually drove it right like he's driven that car probably about five times in the five years that he's had it and he didn't really have the time to put in to fix it because you know things started leaking there was uh, it was losing prime every time he was uh, it would sit around for a while the battery was done it started having a bit of uh, you know regular wear and tear sort of thing so uh, it needed attention and my dad didn't have the time to do it so um, while that was happening I, I was still looking for a car I found a W124 um, similar to my dad's however it was the uh, facelifted models so I think it was about a 92 93 uh, with the bigger bumpers um, and this one had an OM602 motor okay now talking to the seller it, it was a very sketchy history of the vehicle he said something about the engine was rebuilt but then it uh, overheated it wasn't running it, it was just it just sounded very sketchy but the body looked pretty clean on on the pictures so we uh hooked up the trailer and we drove down the five and a half hours to go get it the when we arrived there uh the seller turned out to be a young guy in, in his 20s early 20s his dad was kind of sitting on the side just kind of rolling his eyes the whole time uh, clearly this guy didn't have a clue what he was doing uh, he couldn't even find the key when we got there so i kind of got a little upset obviously because we just drove you know five hours to to go get this car and we wouldn't even be able to load it because the, the steering wheel was uh, was locked so he couldn't tell us what was wrong with this car he couldn't tell us what was done to the car it it was all very sketchy but this car had to be rescued so we basically spent a little bit of time found the key under one of the uh, carpets loaded the car on the trailer got a good price on it have a nice day and brought it home we lifted it up it was in a horrendous condition okay so pretty much everything underneath was rusted um, this guy had used wood screws to attach uh, grounding cables to the side of the, the, the panels on the car it was just a, it, I basically decided at this point it wasn't worth it we tried to start the engine it started it sounded absolutely horrible so it clearly needed work uh, the chassis was not worth saving so I said you know what let's get this engine we'll save the engine uh, mechanically we can probably get it up and running get rid of the, the the chassis we'll find a better one so we pulled the engine out and just so luck had it within a couple of days uh, very locally to us this uh, w201 came up all right and this one um was now we'll have a look i'll walk around it so you can kind of appreciate the the how clean this car is but basically the previous owner had was right in the middle of a head gasket job on his uh, gasoline engine and and i think he either ran out of steam or had to clear up the project maybe spend too much time with it so he kind of handed me this car for 500 bucks with a trunk full of parts uh, all sorts of new gaskets uh, i think the head was rebuilt at the time the head gasket was you know brand new so so i actually still have a ton of parts that that came with the car but basically he said just just get it out of here i, I don't have time to uh, to finish it so we picked it up and i said great we have the om602 we have the w201 this is going to be easy that engine was originally offered in this vehicle so this is going to be basically just a bunch of lego pieces put it all together get it out to drive everybody's happy sort of we got the engine in it we pulled out the gasser we put the diesel engine in it like i said it ran horribly so we started again massive knock off one of the cylinders i have no idea what the hell is actually happening and uh and it just stopped right uh, other projects just came and went uh we did a bunch of engine swaps on sprinters did a bunch of turbo rebuilds we we spent the next couple of years basically maintaining everything under the sun except for this so this car and my dad's w2 124 sat in the garage for a number of years because he like i said he didn't really drive it and the w124 started having a lot of issues leaks uh, it was losing the prime so this summer uh, i finally managed to convince my dad to sell the w124 i said listen it's an old vehicle sure the engine is great but it needs transmission work it needs all sorts of this all sorts of that so he finally said okay fine i haven't had a time to play with it let's get it out of the way and and just kind of reduce the number of projects so i said great solid plan we got rid of that uh, car 
So this is about the only thing that's left that's sort of a project for my dad. Now, I already gave it to my dad for his 60th birthday. He's now 62. So two years ago, I handed my dad the keys, even though the car was already in his garage. Uh, I basically said, you know, this is, uh, this is for your birthday. Happy birthday. Car doesn't run. The engine doesn't run. Um, but, you know, enjoy. So um, I think basically this summer I, I wrapped up all of my daily projects and I said, it's time. Okay, like this is a present doesn't run. I clearly, I owe it to my dad to finish this car. So um, I pulled it up at my place. We'll throw it on the hoist. Um, and it's time to, to get this thing running. So let's take a look around the vehicle. I, I really wanna show you how clean it is. Um, hopefully you're gonna appreciate it as much as I do. And, uh, and then I'm gonna go in the front, we're gonna take a look at the engine and see what, what, what's gonna happen with it. All right, let's have a look. So I mentioned this is the W201. So this is a 1992, it's an anthracite gray um, example. And it's a Canadian car. Uh, even if you look at the build spec, this is a vehicle that was built for Canada it does not show that at all i mean most cars you're going to find here that are that age really really show their age there's a lot of rust all over the place this thing is clean okay i was having it, it's got a couple of specs here that i'm going to show you in a second but overall this is a phenomenal condition car which is why uh, it's really worth saving to be honest this is about the uh the gist of it right i don't like the gas engine the 2.6 i don't really care for it i'm sure it's a great engine but honestly to me this had a project value so it's got a couple of these on both sides and to be honest it's entirely possible that we actually did this because where the car sat parked at my dad's place um he had his snow blower kind of uh, sort of on the side of it so it's entirely possible that we actually did this so um, I don't know if we're gonna go ahead and try and fix these, but you know, it's on the plastic anyway, so it probably doesn't really matter. So going forward, sorry about that. Going forward, same thing, you know, look at even the front, the front fenders. Now the suspension, the brakes, that kind of stuff is, is gonna have to be done. You know, the car's been sitting around for quite a while. So it's actually pretty, uh, you know, obviously all the mechanical components are gonna have to get replaced, but all in all, you can kind of see the condition of it. It doesn't really have, uh, even stone chips has a little speck there. A little speck there, one stone chip. So this is this is really the, the only issue. And I think this was like that when we bought it. I'm not sure we're gonna do much about it. I'm probably gonna end up uh, replacing the fender. We're gonna try and find another fender for it. Um, these do come up every now and then on um, in the local junkyard. So this, I, I'm not gonna try and fix this. Um, I think the previous owner had uh, kind of had like a little fender bender there. So um, it, it's been sitting around for a while. Clearly it's perforated. I'm not much of a rust guy, so I'm probably not gonna try it. So either we're gonna drive it like this or we're gonna just find another fender for it. I mean, the rest of it is, as you can see, is pretty, pretty clean. Oh, we got a little, little mirror issue here. Now it's been sitting under for a little bit of time. We spent a little bit of time sitting under a tree at my dad's before we got it in the garage. So that's gonna have to be cleaned up. But as you can see at the top here, there's really very little that's actually wrong with it. another little scratch there you can see looks like they tried to repair it a little bit that might need a little bit of paint correction some stone chips there and that's it let's have a look at the back so again they're here I know it's it's hard to appreciate if you're if you're not if you don't live in Canada but this is a very very clean Canadian vehicle now I apologize for all these. Like <laughs> I already mentioned, the um, the rear springs on that W210. So we had already done the shocks, so brand new shocks, brand new springs. When we actually threw the car out, so we took them off because I'm gonna put them up for sale. But um, look at that; it's just phenomenal condition. All right, now let's have a look at the interior.
I absolutely love this. Look at that. Looks like new, obviously the steering wheel is a little worn out there, but the rest of the car is just clean, clean, clean. Those seats will need a little bit of a wash. Ah, what do we got here? We got tape, all right. Oh geez, I wonder what's on this. Some sort of a mixtape here. We're gonna have to play with this. Play and check it out. The wood, uh, the wooden trim is pretty decent. A little bit of cracking here, that uh, I think is pretty normal for most of, for these vehicles. But look at that dash. There's no cracks anywhere on it. Yeah, I just absolutely love the condition of this car. Two hundred thirty-eight thousand kilometers. So that's pretty good. That's obviously not the mileage of the engine. So we're gonna have to. I'm gonna, I, to be honest, I can't remember really what the mileage of the engine was. I think it was just about there somewhere. No sagging on the headliner. Absolutely nothing. Little could use a little bit of a wash. Just a couple of spots here and there. But I kind of like this uh, dual tone setup going on here on the handles. I don't know if this is a standard thing, but. Let's have a look at the back. Look at that. It doesn't have a speck of rust anywhere on it. Obviously needs a vacuum, that's fine, but the seats are like new. This is why I, I absolutely absolutely have to rescue this car i mean there's no way that this was going to get scrapped because of the engine look at that absolutely fantastic all right oh i just noticed a little no i think that's just a little dirt there all right let's have a look at the engine real quick if you're familiar with these cars oh my god this thing is super heavy let's put this hood into the service position there there we go okay so going back to what i was originally talking about this is a 2.6 this was originally a 2.6 gas car that we threw a an om602 engine from a w124 now this engine was originally offered in this vehicle so the engine mounts everything kind of lined up everything is great um I'm gonna have to, and yeah, you can see that uh, I think mice at one point had kind of started getting in here, so they were kind of doing a little, they were having a bit of a mess going on, but um, I suspect a lot of the electronics are gonna have to disappear. I haven't gone into actually trying to figure out what's what here, but um, there's a lot less electrical wiring associated with the 602, because it's mostly entirely mechanical, right? Like as long as the, the injection pump has uh, enough pow has power just to the uh, shutoff relay or whatever um, the, the engine will run it really requires nothing other than um, power to the starter for this vehicle to uh, to run so lots of room this is the original rad from the six uh, from the uh, w124 um, i think i'm going to end up using that i have a copious amount of parts from both vehicles that i'm going to hopefully i'm going to have enough to to put this together and like I said, I'm gonna have to clean all this up. Now, some of this is part of the engine. So there we go. So this is all gonna have to go because I suspect this is all from the gasser by looking at it. Let's have a look. What is that? No, five cylinder. Oh, this might actually be from the diesel. Judging from this, I think this is the, yeah that's your glow plug relay there so i guess this is part of the 602 wiring oh this is going to be so much fun trying to uh trying to decipher this but fortunately this is about the only thing i really need i gotta get the glow plugs uh wired up uh, otherwise this engine will probably have a hard time starting certainly out here where uh, it gets a little bit cold in the winter i don't suspect we're gonna set this up as a winter car i suspect this is going to be a uh, summer cruiser so the plan for this is to get the engine running 
give the transmission overhaul and and kind of replace all of the mechanical stuff on the car clean up the bottom the suspension the brakes that kind of stuff and put this up on the road and just basically drive it as a daily driver in the summer okay um, i don't want to have anything uh, really fancy with it at the moment maybe later on if my dad decides that you know if we sort out all the mechanical issues and we decide this is a nice clean car we might actually start playing with getting a little more power out of the the pump and and going from there all right i just noticed a little bit of a oh, that's a little disappointing i hadn't seen that before i guess it's been sitting around for a while with some of these needles starting to rust a little bit so that's it that's it for the engine now let's let's see if we can crank this up just so you guys can hear the uh, sort of noise that it's making to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the manifold out first i'm going to clean up a little bit of room here because uh i'm going to have to bleed the lines they haven't like i said the car hasn't been starting forever we're going to take the manifold crank it hopefully start it see the noise that it makes right now and then the plan for uh, before the end of the video is to actually take the injectors out and test my new try my new injection injector test pump okay so the uh the the what this pump does you guys might have seen videos of this but basically you hook a peach injector here you crank it up to i think it's about 1900 psi and uh the injector is supposed to basically test the pop pressure of the injector and the spray pattern so i'm very i suspect one of these injectors is either stuck or very dirty which was causing the the knocking sound when we started a couple of years ago if we can sort this out fairly easily then the next uh, step is to clean up all of the wiring clean up the car and then start going down the path of uh, replacing all the maintenance items it up to try and believe the lines this is the the starter cable <laughs> so, so we've got fuel coming out of all of the lines now so we're going to tighten them back up all right here we go sounds like the last injector is knocking um, you know like I said this engine has been sitting around for a very very long time now the good thing is that after sitting for about five years it fired up pretty much right away okay we didn't you saw we didn't really have to crank it a lot of time we got a little bit of fuel fuel in the injectors the engine fired up right up so I'm fairly hopeful that the, the engine's fine and we can just you know fix the injectors and, and rescue it without really going into some big work on it so what we're gonna do now is we're going to take all five injectors and then we're going to put them up on the test on the test bench up there to test them one by one to see uh, their opening pressure and to see what pattern they're pushing out.
It's going to be an entire episode on the engine specifically and all the work we're going to do to get it back up and running um, into its sort of new condition. Now, the last thing I want to do today is to go around the rest of the car so we can have a look at the suspension, the brakes and the drivetrain underneath and kind of um, come up with a list of all of the work that's going to have to be done over the winter. OK, the idea, the plan anyways, is to have this car finished in a nice, clean, like new condition um, to give the key to my dad uh, sort of as soon as the snow's gone off the ground. So we're talking April. Lots of time to do that. This, uh, like I said earlier, this should be a fairly straightforward project. The car is in a very good condition, so actually bringing it back to life should be uh, a very easy task. Okay, let's take a look. Uh, let's pop the tires off real quick and have a look at the suspension and the drivetrain. All right. Probably original shocks. Those are going to have to be changed. I think it's pretty straightforward. The brake lines seem okay. I know they look a little bit rough probably on the camera, but they're actually pretty good uh, for the age and um, the fact that this is a Canadian vehicle. Actually, looking at the discs, there's no, there's really no lip here, which tells me that these were probably replaced just before the car was put uh, put away, or uh, the previous owner started doing the engine, the engine work. Now, looking at some of the the discs here, you can kind of have a look, and I'll be able to see the pads exactly. But the pad is actually very beefy. I think these brakes are actually new, and they were probably just done before um, before the car was put away. Like I said. Um, Probably ideal case is to replace the uh, steering components. They all look very dated. They all look very old, as well as the sway bar, sway bar bushings, and the sway bar links on the bottom. Uh, that said, the spring, all four springs look pretty good. So I'm probably gonna leave these for now. Um, I do want to. There's a kit that brings the car down about an inch, inch and a half. So I'm probably going to be looking at getting one of those because frankly, uh, with a nice clean wheel setup, this will look very, very nice. So that's it at the front. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to take everything, take everything apart, basically clean it, get rid of all the rust, put it back together. Now, the one thing that I did notice, I don't know if you can see it back there, but the the control arm bushings are actually very, look very worn and completely cracked so I suspect what's gonna happen is I'm gonna take the control arms off and and that's going to allow me to uh, redo the bushings get new bushings in there clean everything up get rid of some of the rust okay that's the front let's have a look at the back all right the back is more of the same um, brakes same thing they look pretty new there's no lip on the side here the pads are very thick so once again I think the previous owner just had the brakes done just before he parked the car that said, the um, the shocks, same story as the front. These look very old, old and dated. So these are going to have to be replaced. Bushings all around. Now, you may be noticing quite a bit of rust on the subframe here. Um, that's pretty normal for a Canadian vehicle. I certainly, what I want to do, uh, just judging from the control arms and the condition of some of these, um, I think the best way to do it is to bring the subframe down on the floor and basically take the whole thing apart off the car as opposed to trying to get some of these rusted bolts. And you can see in the back there, some of these are really kind of really started uh, falling apart there. This is going to be hard to, this is going to be hard to do in the car. So I think what I'm going to do, take everything down, uh, strip it, clean it, new bushings, and just put it back up on the car. And at the same time, I can do the brakes while I'm at it. Okay, so that's the front and the back. Uh, I'm not going to show you the other two sides, more or less uh, the exact same thing. Um, basically both sides look identical to each other. Let's have a look at the bottom because uh, frankly, that's a little more interesting and there's a little bit more discussion there. We're in the back of the car now facing forward. A um, couple of things to mention as we're, as we're having a look here. You're gonna see the rust all around the subframe. I already showed you that off the side there. There's not a whole lot I can do about it other than bring the subframe down. Now you're gonna see also a lot of dirt. That's because this appears to have been um, rust proofed for Canadian uh, for the Canadian winter and you're gonna see a lot of um, oil sprayed from under the car which probably explains the condition of the vehicle in general that said the hardware is getting very worn out and certainly could use a bit of a refresh now the thing hanging up right over there is the the remnants of the gas car fuel pump and um, filter that is not really needed in the diesel side because diesel injection pump actually 
pulls the uh, the diesel fuel out on its own. So that's not really required. So to solve this, I'm probably going to put a um, diesel lift pump, which is very low pressure, and a diesel fuel filter in that same setup to try and use the mounting brackets up at the top. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about in the back here is the differential. The one you see here is the one that was originally installed on the vehicle. So this is the gas vehicle rear differential. Now this is a 3.07 rear diff for uh, which is used for a number of vehicles and a number of uh, setups. The In this particular car, it's the same diff that's actually used on the 2.5 naturally aspirated diesel engine and as well as the 2.6 liter gasoline that this car was originally um, delivered with. The W124 that I pulled the engine out of actually came with the Mercedes anti-slip differential or ASD which is a 2.65 uh, rear ratio so this is actually a lot better for cruising uh, and is going to run uh, the RPM a little bit lower than the stock uh, 307. The problem with this differential is that it's actually physically bigger so it requires different axles it's not a direct swap into the um, into the subframe so it needs different axles and it also needs a different uh, front or back side of the drive shaft to make it work the parts are out there the original mercedes parts it will work but as far as i know they're very very hard to find so i'm going to try and get some part numbers I'll, sh I'll do some shopping around we'll see if we're lucky enough to get this sorted out but if not this is probably going to sit on the shelf until i clean it up and maybe put it up for sale so just moving up to the front of the car, uh, the transmission is going to need some just, just regular uh, maintenance, filter oil, new gasket, just to get uh, any leaks under control. Uh, I'm going to hook up the drive, uh, the drive shaft, replace the two flex discs, replace the bearing, the central bearing for the drive shaft. Those parts are all available. And then as we go in the front, I already mentioned all of the control arms. The steering looks a little bit on the um, worn side. There's quite a bit of leak. Uh, leaking going around so I'm gonna try and replace that clean all of that up and and see what really needs to be done there now one thing I didn't mention is the the emergency brake is actually uh, just about done I mean it's in a horrible condition you can kind of see it there now unfortunately this is pretty normal for a Canadian vehicle pretty much every single car I've ever owned has completely fallen apart here's the other side Okay, I mean this is this is just bad. This is what happens in, in a country that's focused on salt. So this is gonna have to get done. I mean this car will never pass the safety with this kind of setup here. So we're gonna have to get that done. So I, I like I said earlier, I think I'm gonna just go ahead and drop everything down all at once and deal with the whole setup all in one go because I think that's just gonna save a lot of time on um, on the work. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me on episode one uh, of a project that I've personally waited to get my hands on for a very, very long time because of the personal history that I have with this car, because of what it means for my dad and, and uh, how much I'm looking forward to him being able to drive a nice, clean uh, diesel Mercedes. If you like what you saw, give us a thumbs up. Um, if you'd like to follow along, subscribe to the channel so you can get updates on all of the new videos. I hope to see you again next time.